New Zealand is going to share classified security information with Japan in a bid to keep a lid on China's growing grip on the Asia-Pacific region. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern and her Japanese counterpart announced last night they're negotiating an information-sharing agreement for closer engagement on security issues. Joining us now is Otago University international relations expert Robert Patman. Good morning. Good morning, Ryan. This is a very interesting development. How will China feel? Because given the history between China and Japan, how will China feel about this? Well, I don't think China would be ecstatic about it, and it, it may well sort of make some uh, rumbling noises in diplomatic terms in, in the direction of New Zealand. But I think uh, for, it's no secret that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade and this government have been seeking to upgrade the relationship with Japan for for a number of years, and uh, that was making good good uh, progress before the interruption of COVID nineteen. And I think developments in the last this year have given it added impetus. Chinese the the China uh, security agreement uh, with the Solomon Islands, and also of course the Russian invasion of Ukraine. These are both seen as. Uh, 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 how should I put it, uh, challenges to the international rules-based order, which both Japan and New Zealand hold very closely. So yeah. the, game, yeah, the I, game's changing, isn't it? The game's changing. It is. But China should, should kind of expect that this, this is what would happen when you start to inch ever closer to our, to our region, to our territory. Um, I note that Australia signed a military agreement or an intention to sign a military agreement with Japan earlier this year. And Beijing wasn't happy with that. They said they were stirring up trouble. Do you expect that we would get a similar response for this announcement? Not necessarily. I think uh, decision makers in Beijing have continued to make a distinction between Australia's closeness to the United States and New Zealand's um, slightly more distant relationship to the United States. We, of course, have a very good relationship with the Biden administration, but historically we're not as close to the United States as Australia the interesting thing is that in Tokyo, the Prime Minister made a point of saying, despite, despite welcoming this real, you know, almost breakthrough in relations with Japan, she said at the same time, this is not a time to pigeonhole uh, China as being closely aligned with Russia, or words to that effect. Yes. So I think there was a determination here on the point, on the part of the government, um, to try to keep a dialogue going with China and not in a sense, buy into the argument that, you know, that uh, China is strictly aligned with Russia. I mean, China well, has... Well, you don't, you don't want to you don't want to bite yeah. the hand that feeds you, do you? With China being our biggest trading partner, obviously, That's it's, right. it's a tightrope that the Prime Minister's walking. For people who are watching this morning thinking, well, why do I care about this? You know, why should I care what um, spy or intelligence information New Zealand shares with Japan? Why is this important? Well, it's very important for us as a country because uh, although we're a small player, we are globally active in terms of trade. We trade with more than 100 countries, and we're dependent on something called the rules-based order. We're not big enough to make our own rules, so we need international institutions to uphold them. And basically, Japan and New Zealand, as well as the majority of countries in the world, see eye to eye on this. And therefore, this sharing of information is designed to make sure that countries which engage in unilateral actions such as China in relation to the South China Sea or Russia in relation to the Ukraine. So these sort of authoritarian forces are held in check. 